demands for your country. The nation demands for the portion. Let us all unite to a portion and make a Fourth August, 2021. A movement that started only as a social media hashtag, Fix the Country, had metamorphosed into perhaps the biggest protest organized by a non-political group in Ghana. A movement of ordinary citizens was now demanding strict accountability of its government. I think that's very important that we show that we reject the attitude of the government and we want to create a culture of dissent. It's important that we create a culture of dissent. We show our disapproval. We are tired of the lies. Article 71 office holders are lies. It is bogus. It is a calculated attempt to steal us. We are tired of the mendaciloquence, the zabanism and the political prostitute. Their plan was to spread the protest across the country. Today, August 4, is a rebirth of Ghana. And this in itself is a manifestation of that rebirth. But this is not the end. This is actually the beginning. We are all hungry in this country. And we won't allow tribalism to divide us. From here, we are going to Kumasi, Tamale, because we want all of us to participate in this demonstration. But this was not to be. After exactly a year, a breakaway by the Economic Fighters League, the arrest and prosecution of Oliver Baka Vormawo for alleged treasonable comments and a general lack of activity have made the group a pale shadow of its former self. It felt like the, the, there wasn't that pursuit of the message which was fix the country. It was just about some people giving themselves some self-importance and self-aggrandizing sort of, you know, status. That's Chris Atadika. He once was a strong supporter of the group, but not anymore. A selected group of people. Face the country is something that lies in the heart of every young person in Ghana. So we, we, we use our roads, we see bad roads, we feel it inside that, uh, that no, this thing needs to be fixed. At a point, you had some faction of the leaders coming out to put out a statement saying they are no more part of the movement. So I blame the leaders for it because obviously, if they also blame our leadership for the poor status of our country, right? If Fix the Country itself as a movement wasn't able to work, it means the leadership of Fix the Country also needs to be blamed. And why did the EFL abandon the Fix the Country ship? I meet fighter Hardy Yakubu for some answers. The, the main thing is that there were there were uh, uh, measures, actions, utterances, clearly, consistently. And this is not just once or twice, okay, consistently. We're trying very hard, you know, to push the, the, the message in a way that clearly was in the benefit of the uh, opposition. If we wanted to be in the opposition or to join the opposition, we would have joined it. If we wanted to join the, uh, the government, we would have done so. This is strongly rejected by Fix the Country. Felicity Nelson is one of the conveners. I, that's completely false. I, this isn't something that I'm ever going to support. And if there's, there's, they made a lot of allegations when they had their press conference. And all of those allegations came with literally no proof. So if they're saying some persons who, mm -hmm. if you tell me some persons are pushing in favor of a certain political party, who's that person? Who, what political party is that? You know, you know, be bold. If you're bold enough to make allegations, back them up and say this particular person, that particular person, on this particular day, this is what happened. You know, be specific. But when you start throwing general allegations around, like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm refuting it, but I don't even want to spend too much time on it. So why does the group seem to have lost its luster? If you look at even what's happening with Oliver, considering the fact that, you know, um, he was... Well, he was in detention for about 30 days. 
you know, and there was a lot of back and forth even regarding which court to take him to. Even when he was arrested, it took like nearly 26 hours before he was allowed to even have access to a lawyer. These are, this, like, these are fundamental human rights which were being denied of him. So I definitely think that there's always this um, urge for government to use the police especially to kind of clamp down on us. I, I genuinely think that it's one of those moments where the state's been waiting. We're just waiting for you to slip up and get you on something, just something. And if the state genuinely had a case, why is it that most of the time when they get to the courtroom, the state prosecutor doesn't turn up, they're asking for more time. I think there's definitely people who think, who would not be as active or as vocal because, you know, the reality is that, you know, as Martin Amidu said, when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. And the, rea and the reality is that for a lot of people from jobs to contracts to, you know, certain opportunities, if you say the wrong thing about the government, even if you like the wrong post, these are things which can have opportunities. You can miss out on opportunities, lose out on job opportunities, lose out on scholarship opportunities. So yes, there are real life um, repercussions for speaking up against the government. And what's happening to Oliver is definitely going to make some people, a lot of people, feel like maybe I shouldn't be so vocal, maybe I need to stay, take a step back. Historian and scholar Kwame Dako Ankara agrees government might have been on the heels of the group. By bringing out some of the issues, issues of corruption, issues of, uh, let's say, mismanagement, incompetence and so on, can easily, have, can easily bring the government down or make the government unpopular. So the government and its supporters will also find ways and means to undermine this uh, 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 group so that whatever they say will not be what? Will not catch, with, uh, catch uh, will resonance with the people. So that is the specific uh, uh, issues with regard to this group. What then has become of the group's ideals? If people are speaking up against the state, even if they hate Fix the Country, even if they hate me, if they hate Oliver, and they're speaking up against the state, look, what happened in Swami? They went on one. They did one, one day of him coming over and them showing him small Pepe. <laughs> Small Pepe. So the, the reality is that don't ever think you're not your voice doesn't matter. You just need to be mo you need to organize and be you if you have a unit and this all of you are saying the same thing, you can win. That's the thing. Fix the country is not about us. It's about the people. So once the people are out there going on their protests, you know, fighting for what they deserve, what is owed to them, is a win for me. It doesn't have to be under the guise or the banner of fix the country for it to be a win. It's never about personal glory, fix the country's glory. It's about we want Ghana to be better. Whether or not the Fix the Country group has been successful with its aim, its leaders, supporters and even rivals agree on one thing. That the struggle continues, even if under a new banner name. Manuel Cranting, Joy News, Accra.